Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Reiterter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for tuning into my latest video. The patient in this procedure attended with bilateral impacted medial. So bilateral means both sides, um, medial means deep impacted towards the eardrum. Um, earwax, they generally get their earwax removed yearly and their last appointment was due last March. They normally have their ears irrigated so with water at their local GP. Uh, because of the pandemic a lot of GP surgeries are one um, not offering ir irrigation services anymore and two actually not even seeing patients face to face they're trying to do a lot of stuff remotely. So this patient's well overdue. Um, this is the patient's left ear. You can see it's, the wax is quite soft and it was really deeply impacted. So I did ask the patient whether they had used a cotton bird. Um, the patient did, did, did admit that they were getting a bit of itchiness, so they did poke in their ears. You can see there's a bit of surface wax on the ear canal wall. Um, one of the questions um, that I wanted to uh, I often get asked is, why do I go for the, the me middle part of the ear, the, the, the main body of the wax? Now, sometimes if removing the wax uh, on the edge of the ear canal will help facilitate and remove the main bulk of the wax, the body of the wax, then we often try and remove the wax off the canal wall. But in this case, it's, for me, I can tell that it's the, removing the, the wax on the surface of the ear canal itself won't really contribute or help or assist or facilitate in removing the main bulk. So for me, as a clinical ear care practitioner, my main objective is to relieve the patient of their symptoms. So even if there's a bit of wax around the edge of the canal wall, that's not going to impede or impact on the patient's hearing. So I want to go for the, the problem area, and that's the main bulk. But in some cases, so, so it is a good question to get asked, um, that um, so many people ask. In some cases, though, we have to remove the wax, like, especially if it's dead skin, that's adhered to the wax off the canal wall. If we peel that off from the sides first, that can facilitate removing the, the, the main lump or body of wax that's impacted. But in this case, it wasn't going to. So I just wanted to focus on the main body. In a moment, you will see I, I do quickly skirt around the edge. So this wax, because of the consistency, it's very, oh, it's, it's hard to get a suction. You can see the, the zone of suction probe is actually. Uh, imprinted a, a mark within the soft wax. Um, the patient had been using drops already uh, on this side, but you'll see in a moment, I will go, I will put some drops in. So while I'm there, I'm just mopping up around the edge, but you'll see in a moment, this, this wax, this peel off the canal wall, but it, it stops here and it's not, it's gonna help me in any way remove the main body of wax. So that's actually a good illustration. So I've just put some drops in, um, some olive oil drops here just to bind it. Now, on this ear, uh, the patient had already been using the, the drops. Um, her right ear was also very blocked. However, the patient didn't use any drops in the right ear. And that's because uh, the patient reports a possible perforation, so a, a hole of the eardrum, so a tympanic perforation. Um, they weren't sure, because they, they said that one specialist in the past said that she had a perforation, the other said that she didn't. If there was any risk or possibility she had a perforation, then she shouldn't have had um, ear irrigation, because that's one of the contraindications. If you've got a tympanic perforation, you shouldn't be form performing irrigation. So I wasn't sure whether the patient had or not, but you'll see in a moment when we use the left side, I was trying to avoid using drops because if you've got a tympanic perforation, you want to really avoid using or putting any drops in the ear because that can then enter the middle ear, so the space behind the ear, and then cause an infection of the middle ear, which you want to avoid. So the olive, this side, the patient was very uh, adamant that she didn't have a perforation, so we put some more drops in. The patient had been using drops anyway on this side. See, the oil has really helped. It's lubricated the canal wall. It's binded this plug of wax together in a solid mass, um, making it easier to extract. The patient's ear canal entrance was quite narrow, so you can see some of the wax got stuck as I was retrieving it. There's the patient's tympanic membrane. There is some wax in the annulus region. So the annulus region um, is where we're going now. So that's at the bottom of the eardrum. Uh, in the, it's also an area called the 
inferior, so inferior means bottom, recess. So there's recesses around the ear, the eardrums because that's because the ear canal actually narrows about half a centimetre away from the eardrum and it expands and protrudes back outwards and that causes little crevices, um, trenches, caves um, and recesses. So just delicately using a fine end tip just to remove that wax from the annulus region or the inferior recess. There is also some wax in the anterior recess. You can see that there, there's some wax on the left hand side. I'm just approaching it with a fine end tip, but I realized I, I would need to bend the fine end tip because it would become in contact with the bony part. So I've just gone to the pars placida. So the pars placida uh, is the top part of the eardrum. We can also call this the attic. Uh, another name for this region where we just got some soft wax is the pos, sorry, that superior to the top anterior quadrant so when we're looking at the eardrum the superior anterior quadrant you could classify that as being northwest if you're comparing it to a compass so i've just got the fine end tip and i've just bent the the, the distal lens so the the bit where we actually sucking from i've just bent that a bit um to curve around the bony part of the ear canal so i don't want to come in contact with the bony part of the ear canal so you can see there's a bit more of a gap there compared to before. This wax is quite lodged um, in the anterior recess, but you will see in a moment I managed to extract this slowly but surely. So obviously when we, whenever you work near the eardrum you do have to have a steady hand. The eardrum, the thickness of the eardrum is approximately 0.1 millimeters. So it's very, uh, very thin, very, very delicate. So I'm happy with that. Uh, I'm just mopping up near the entrance now. So I've just resorted back to the full zone of suction probe for greater surface area. So with the fine end gorge, um, the internal diameter of the suction tube itself, the lumen, what we call, that's 1.27 millimeters as opposed to the zone of suction probe, which is two millimeters lumen, so internal diameter of the suction probe. So it's a bit much, almost double the surface area. So um, it's just perfect for soft wax like this near the entrance on the cartilaginous portion of the ear canal where we can make a bit of contact with the ear canal because the cartilaginous portion of the ear canal is semi-sensitive so we can apply some pressure. It's made up of uh, a thick layer of skin, one millimeter in thickness, some muscle and then cartilage which is malleable. We can, uh, it's flexible. Whereas the inner two thirds of the ear canal is a very thin layer of skin measuring 0.1 if not less millimeters, and it's directly attached to bone. So there's no buffering there. There's no fatty tissue or muscle. Um, so if you do come in contact with the bony part of the ear canal, it's not a nice, pleasant experience for the patient. So really happy with that. Bit of staining, bit of residual wax around the edge, but that's all insignificant really. We've got the main bulk out. So this is the patient's left ear. Now both ear canal entrances are very narrow, so I was having to retract, I mean, so widen, the ear canal entrance to insert the endoscope. Now, this is this is the ear where the patient wasn't sure whether they've got a perforation. I had my doubts because I can't, I wouldn't, it's very hard to believe um, that a clinical ear care specialist would perform ear irrigation knowingly that the patient's got a perforation. But the patient has had conflicting advice. One person said she has got a perforation, the other said she hasn't. So ideally we want to be putting olive oil drops in straight away here because you can see the wax is very soft and gooey and mushy. Olive oil would really help to bind this but the back of my mind I just wanted to persevere for a, a few minutes just to see if I can remove this soft gooey wax without putting any drops in just in case the patient has got a, a perforation. Um, just to let you know, it was a false alarm in the end. You'll see that the patient, well, they may have had a perforation before that's plausible and it's healed, but there was no perforation today. And the way I use the drops today is slightly different. So putting drops in it to assist in the procedure, something that I actually developed myself. Um, I wasn't taught that. It's something that I decided to try. Um, it worked really well. And when, when we train our delegates, um, when I train people in the procedure, I do advise them to use these drops as much as possible, wherever it is possible and it's safe to do, because it really does help the, help in the procedure. And normally we would soak the ear for a few minutes and then drain the ear for a few minutes so the drops comes out of the ear. 
but in this case I used the drops very differently so just using a Jobson horn because it's a soft gooey wax I was able to get that on the cartilaginous portion of the ear canal just mopping up as, just to get as much out as possible safely as possible before I do use the drops because at this stage remember I still don't know whether the patient has got a tympanic perforation or not so when I do eventually put the drops in in this ear I tilted the patient's head over to the side so the drops could penetrate but then I went immediately back in with the suction probe I didn't allow time for it to soak I just went in with the drops in and the reason for that, I didn't want the drops, if at all possible, to seep through the side of the wax and enter a perforation if one was present. So I was trying to use the olive oil drops live in the procedure um, whilst I was physically trying to remove the wax. So the drops went in, I was using the suction probe that was sucking the wax out and the oil at the same time. And it worked really well actually, you'll see that in a moment. It's a bit more blurry, you, you will notice that as well, because, because we didn't drain the ear and we're literally sucking the oil back out of the ear after we've inserted it. It does blur the tip of the camera a bit, or the tip of the end description, should I say, but it was still fine, I still managed to remove it. You can see attached to this soft gooey wax is some keratin, some soft, you can see this layer of skin on the surface, we're removing that, peeling that away from the canal wall. And the keratin, the keratin acts as double-sided sticky tape, it sticks to the canal wall but it also sticks to the wax. It's just a very mushy, horrible type of wax, like wet mud. I really don't enjoy removing this type of wax because it's, it's just, you can't vacuum it, you can't scoop it. If you use a Jobson horn like I did before, if you use it a bit deep more further in, you're just squashing this and spreading this soft uh, gooey wax like you would spread butter or margarine on a slice of toast. It's got that consistency like butter. So I've just put the drops in and immediately I've just gone straight back in. And that you can see, as I said, it's, it's a bit blurry at first because we are sucking the oil out at the same time. So there we are, just going in and just going to the base of the ear canal, just so it lift this upwards. You can see it's coming off the base, the floor of the ear canal wall. So I just want to get this wax out as soon as possible because um, I don't want the oil to be in the ear canal for any longer than it needs to be just in case they have got perforation. So normally we would let it soak for five minutes or probably three or four minutes in the clinic and then I'll get the patient to turn the other way with the tissue underneath the ear to drain this oil. And the reason why we drain it is so it doesn't blur the screen so we can see what we're doing but in this case the patient's head is still tilted over, the drops is still penetrating into the ear. I didn't want to give it an opportunity to soak, I just wanted to lubricate, that's the reason why we used it, lubricate the side of the canal walls, lubricate the internal suction probe so wax does travel up, because with this type of soft, gooey, wet, mud type wax it can block the zone the suction probe. So I've got a big lump of wax out here but it's trapped at the entrance, this, the ear canal at the entrance narrows, so I'm really wriggling this through. You can just see the head of the wax, the head of the main body, there's the main body, but it's just near the entrance. Um, her ear canal being narrow is plausibly one of the reasons why the patient gets a natural buildup of wax. The wax trying to migrate out of the ear but it gets trapped near the entrance because it's really narrow. The consistency of the wax as well, she's got very a wet, loose, mud type of wax, so that doesn't really tend to migrate very well. You can see there's the tympanic membrane, there's no perforation, there's no visible hole, so ended up being a false alarm, but rather be safe than sorry, don't want the patient developing an unnecessary, an unnecessary middle ear, ear infection where it was avoidable, so a bit of wax on the roof of the ear canal, so I've just attached a fine end tip again. Just whilst we're there, let's just mop this up. We've done so well, we've got a lot of wax out and it's really safe to remove this. The patient is very still. Just some wax at the base of the ear canal. As well, we're going to go back. So you can see there's a bit of a, a trench here where this piece of wax is. The ear canal kind of dips inwards. It's a narrowing here and it protrudes back outwards and it narrows again. So again, just mopping up right near the entrance now, and that's, we know we're at the entrance because of, as you can see, the hair, hair strands, so the hair strands 
always located on the outer part of the ear canal, normally the outer centimeter. That's where all the hair follicles grow. The hair follicles don't go through the bone, they only go through the cartilage. Um, it's safe to say the patient felt great after the procedure, she's over the moon. There we are, nice and healthy. So a lot of the wax, because it was soft, it did get suctioned up the suction tubing into the suction liner, but there were some big chunks that got trapped at the tip and there we are on the tissue. I hope you enjoyed that video guys, um, I hope you're keeping well and safe wherever you are in the world and um, I shall upload some new videos in due course. Take care guys, bye.